The darkness lay thick in the province of Tyrol, Germany, 1485. The night was calm and still. Nobody in their right mind would be awake at this hour. A candle still burned in an upstairs window, listening outside. One could hear the scratch of quill on parchment and a voice muttering incessantly under its breath. The man is Heinrich Kramer, and he is writing the most blood-soaked book of the 15th century. The Malaeus Maleficarum, The Witch's Hammer, a book that would torment the world for a century after its release, and be responsible for the torture and death of 70,000 innocent people. The trying of witches didn't start with Heinrich. Witchcraft had been a criminal activity since before the 10th century, where it was explicitly named in the Canon Episcopi in 900 AD as the work of the devil. Witchcraft had been tried all across Europe, although the severity with which it was treated was far different from what was to come. A witch could be either male or female, and would usually receive a public punishment, like being placed in the stocks for the day, if found guilty. Far more terrifying was the practice of heresy, as tried by the Inquisitions. This was taken to be the direct opposition to the Word of God, and it was believed that the only way to cure it was through the cleansing of the soul by flame. Being burned at the stake was a costly procedure, and a flashy one, so it was usually reserved for only the worst cases. The Inquisition liked to make a statement when it was called on to act, more as a deterrent to others than based on the real severity of the crime. Witchcraft before the 15th century had been viewed as a crime, but it wasn't heresy. In fact, some would argue it was necessary. Whilst many witches held the title of a magician or sorcerer, and many might have believed their own hype, they were usually midwives and medical practitioners who treated their patients with a mixture of herbal medicine and holistic treatments. Some of the more educated may even have practiced versions of acupuncture and basic triage. They were also known as wise women. Local populations would often rely on wise women for good luck charms and simple remedies, even sometimes taking the recipes of spells home with them. There is evidence among the commonplace books of the time that many families had their own charms and magic spells that they copied down at home alongside passages from the Bible, so they could learn how to read. It would be easy to pin what was to come entirely on the shoulders of Kramer, but he was a product of his time. The seeds of his ideas had been planted centuries before he ever got around to spewing them all forth onto the pages of the Malaeus Maleficarum. It just needed a mind as deranged as his to put them together into the terrifying guide to torment and torture that coalesced out of his own inadequacy. Heinrich Kramer hated women. He hated them with a palpable passion you could almost feel emanating from him as he entered a room. Kramer believed that women were responsible for his own lustful thoughts. He saw them as lower creatures than men, more susceptible to being won over by the devil due to them being born less faithful and more changeable than men. He allowed this loathing to fester into a full-blown psychosis and applied directly to the Pope for a papal bull to persecute witchcraft which he saw as a real and dangerous practice being used by women to subjugate men. The Pope gave him and his initial accomplice, Jacob Sprenger, permission to persecute witches with the church's blessing. Kramer set up his first trials in the city of Innsbruck and, in a display that partially restores the faith in humanity, his first trial was met with mockery and derision by the general populace. Kramer was banned from the city for the way he conducted his investigation, utilizing intimidation, torture, and becoming obsessed with the sexual practices of his victims. He wasn't finished, though. Heinrich had been cast out from Innsbruck, but he swore his revenge. He set about creating a guide to persecuting witches, a compendium of the dread knowledge of demonology. There was a growing community of people dedicating themselves to the study of demons and devil worship across Europe. The deranged writings of these people were growing in popularity as the century continued. 
The Reformation had shaken the security of the church, and people were scared. Women, particularly women who were refused to obey, were particularly easy targets. Kramer specifically outlined them as a threat in the pages of the Maleficarum, stating that there was a hierarchy of evil starting with concubines, followed by midwives, and then women who dominated their husbands. He saw them as turning the natural order upside down, essentially calling a woman who had power in sexuality, knowledge, or matrimony a directly evil being. He goes on to say that female empowerment would bring on the apocalypse. He even made the title of the book, Female, to hammer home his point. Malaeus Maleficarum is a hammer used only on women. It would be spelled Maleficorum if it was used on men. This hatred is plastered all over the insanity of the book's pages. He writes that women are more likely to be seduced by the devil, and that they would be for different reasons that men are seduced by power, but that women turn to the devil out of lack of faith, or for lust. He then goes on to describe the practices of magic as he saw them, listing the ways that people could commune with the devil. This list included harmful magic, curses, cannibalism, and the murder of babies. He even went as far as to name witches Malefica, the first time in history that a word for a female magician had been explicitly bound to evil. Was for descriptions of demonology within the book are distasteful, they might have been harmless if the rest of the book hadn't been a step-by-step -step guide to the persecution of witches. The first two sections are given over to a weak theological and philosophical argument for the existence of witchcraft, which boils down to, the devil is real, so witches must be real, and the descriptions of the nature of witches I've just mentioned. The third section is given over to the procedures that judges should use when prosecuting witches, and outlines the ways in which judges should go about securing confessions. The book advocates the use of torture to secure confessions, going into horrifying detail about how each torture method should be applied until the confession is received, and then the subject should be taken away to another place and the confession confirmed so that there can be no doubt that the torture was the reason for the confession. If the victim refuses to confirm the confession, they are shown more instruments of torture that can be used on them. They are also told that if they confess, their life will be spared, and they will be set free. The book goes into chilling detail on the tortures that can be imposed, and is specific that no torture can be repeated without new evidence, as it would invalidate the testimony. Kramer had sat and thought long and hard about how to abuse the legal system to torture innocent people into confessing to crimes they hadn't committed. He had dedicated long hours to building the validity of his ideas, traveling to Brussels to attempt to gain letters of support from the Emperor's son, Maximilian. When he was denied, he forged them. He also forged letters of support from the faculty of the University of Cologne, the faculty, almost uniformly, condemned his practices as unethical. Even the Inquisition refused to use the Malaeus Maleficarum as a guide, stating it was too monstrous a text to be allowed in their legal proceedings. In the end, it was the secular courts that used the text. Its influence spread like wildfire, even after its widespread condemnation by the Church. As the idea of witchcraft as a threat began to spread through Europe, Kramer's ideas began to gain in support. Eventually, secular courts began to follow the practices enshrined in its pages. Men and women were brought to trial on hearsay evidence and then tortured until they confessed to crimes they didn't commit. The mentally ill were especially vulnerable, as they could be convinced to believe the claims against them. In the end, the blood of 70,000 people, more than three quarters of them women, stained the hands of Heinrich Kramer. Even his one-time supporter, Jacob Sprenger, turned against him, attempting to block his madness from infesting more of Germany. There was little he could do, though. The die had already been cast, and the wave of suffering was already spreading across the continent.
He died trying to stop it, and, in a final act of vengeance, Kramer had Springer's name added as a co-author of the text, years after his death. The horrors committed in the name of that book all started from the mind of a deranged misogynist who wasn't even supported by the church, cementing a message that is more important today than it ever has been before. You should be very careful where your information comes from, or you might be horrified to discover whose ideas you've been peddling. After all, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell icon if you'd like to hear more about terrifying manifestations of evil from us. Either way, we'll see you somewhere further down the road less traveled.